Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday. I love having you with me on the ride with coffee in hand. I want to welcome those of you that can join me now or later. And if you have your Bibles or apps, I'm going to be in Colossians 4. All right, I want to talk about an open door. This is something you see in Scripture, the New Testament. It's unique to Paul's prayers that we would ask God for an open door. All week, we're going to talk about can the church reach the world? I don't know about you. I get despairing. The odds seem stacked up against us sometimes that we're going to be able to make any dent as the world becomes increasingly um, distant and adrift, I think, from the Christian faith. How do we hold the light forth for people to help them light the way? Let me get right into it. Paul's writing in prison. Uh, this is his letter to the church at Colossae. And he says, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us. Now, of all the things you could pray for when you're in prison, uh, my list would be short. Number one, get me out of prison. Number two, if I have to stay in prison, keep me alive in prison. But notice what Paul prays for that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison. I love this idea of an open door. We'll see that a couple of times, but Paul uses this phrase to describe a unique season of effectiveness for the message of Christ. I love that because he's recognizing that the odds were stacked against him. I mean, if the odds feel stacked against us in 2020 to really make an impact on the world, how much must Paul have thought? How is this ever going to happen? I'm in prison. Uh, we're such a small group taking the gospel through the Roman Empire. So he prays for an open door, which tells us that unless God works, all of our best strategizing, campaigning, planning, um, implementing is going to do nothing. So notice Paul actually asked that this open door would connect with his clear presentation of the gospel in the next verse. That I may make it clear. So the Apostle Paul is praying for the church's help that he would speak clearly. How much more do we need to pray? Not just that God would open a door, but when the door is open, that we might speak clearly. And notice he says, that, which is how I ought to speak. In other words, this should characterize us all the time. Now, he takes his own prayer request here, and then he expands it, I think, to um, almost a way of life. We can think of us as a church, followers of Jesus, whether you're in my church or your church, that we would together own this charge to shine the light of God's message to a dark and hurting world. Notice what he says, walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Do you notice how Paul seems to treat time and space here as precious commodities? Pray that God might open a door. Pray that when it happens, I might speak clearly. And now let's all of us walk carefully wisely knowing that those outside of the faith are watching us maybe for a very short time. It's ultimately a short time for all of us on this earth and that we would make the best possible use of the time. So I'd recommend the next time you're with uh, friends, non-Christian friends, just have a good old fashioned political debate. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, not sure that's the best use of time. Um, uh, Years ago, I engaged in political debate a lot more. Uh, I remember Lisa's fingernails squeezing my knee as I sat with family members fighting political battles. And she was right all along. It took me a long time to catch up to her wisdom there, which is most men. Um, if I want to save my battle energy, I want to save it for talking about Jesus. Right? I mean, there's, there's so little time. And we need to make the most of that opportunity and pray that God would open a door for us. Notice what he goes on to say. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, which is carefully preserved um, 
well-preserved speech. That means we are to invest in how we talk, the way we think about our money, the way we think about our time and our vacations and all the things that we attend to, the way we speak, that we would have um, speech that would build someone up and encourage them. But notice, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. So the way we conduct ourselves will provide opportunities to speak. And sometimes you know when it's there, don't you? Have you ever tried to force an opportunity that isn't there? I mean, not just the gospel, but in life. Um, parents, you ever talk to your children and you look back and say, why did I choose that time, that moment? Why did I make a terrible uh, use of his time and mine? Um, there's a window sometimes, there's an open door where that's the moment to seize the opportunity. Um, so I think that we are to be postured for readiness. So we should be praying that God will open doors, that we can boldly and confidently speak when those open doors are given to us, and that we may know how to answer each person. Uh, you see this again in uh, 1 Corinthians. I just wanted to uh, end with this scripture. Paul says, but I will stay in Ephesus until Pentecost for a wide door for effective work has opened to me and there are many adversaries. May I encourage you, if there are people in your life that don't know Jesus and they're on your heart and you want to reach them, I think the best thing we can do first is sit down and say, Lord, take that person's name, give me an open door that I might be ready to speak. And I'm convinced if we did that more, we might be surprised at the open doors God gives us to share. Not to force it like a battering ram, but to live wisely in just sort of mindful of the people we love and to trust that God's going to open those doors of conversation for us. Let me pray for you today that he might do just that. Lord, thank you for each one watching. Would you help them pray as you would help me pray for open doors of opportunity. Lord, give us a heart towards those who have yet to discover the awesome Savior that you are, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everyone.